In this video I'm going to show you how to work out the gradient formula or the derivative from first principles for a number of functions. I'm going to assume that you're happy that this is the gradient formula for the, um, from first principles so that the derivative f dashed of x is the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. If not there's a video previous to this one that covers where this formula comes from. But let's try and apply this to uh, a first function we'll have f of x equals x squared. So by this definition we've got here that will tell us that f dashed of x, that's going to be the limit as h tends to zero. Now f of x plus h here, so I need to put x plus h into the function, so that's x plus h squared minus f of x, so that's minus x squared all divided by h. Now if we multiply out the brackets we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared and I've still got the minus x squared here all divided by h and we see that x squared and minus x squared cancel out so that leaves 2xh plus h squared and cancelling a factor of h top and bottom uh, I need to take an h from here and from here we're just left with the limit as h tends to zero of 2x plus h. Now as h tends to 0, um, i.e. as h gets closer and closer to 0, well 2x plus h will get closer and closer to 2x because this h term will be basically 0. So in the limit we've got that this is equal to 2x. So that's proven from first principles that the derivative of x squared is 2x. It's very similar for x cubed, um, f of x equals x cubed, so f dashed of x is the limit as h tends to zero of x plus h cubed, putting x plus h into the function minus f of x, which is x cubed, all divided by h, and so uh, we just multiply out the uh, bracket here, I'm going to assume that you could do that or use the binomial expansion or, or however you prefer to do that, um, but we get x cubed plus 3hx squared plus 3h squared x plus h cubed and then I've got this minus x cubed still all divided by h so again the x cubed cancels and again I can cancel uh, h from top and bottom here so that h goes that h reduces just h squared to h and this h cubed becomes h squared and we cancel that one out so what we have left is 3x squared plus 3hx plus h squared and as h tends to zero obviously the h squared uh, goes to zero this term here 3hx well um, although x is a variable so you might say well you know x could be very large as h, h becomes very small we're, we're treating each um, value of x as a uh, constant as we're doing this so for each particular value of x the gradient formula you know the gradient at that point is this limit. So x is considered fixed here and as h tends to zero then uh, this term tends to zero and we're just left with this 3 uh, x squared so the gradient formula for uh, x cubed is indeed 3 x squared as you may already have known but this proves it from first principles. It's not much too, it's not too much harder to do this for x to the n for any um, thinking of n being a positive integer here and for x to the n the derivative is then the limit of h tends to zero of x plus h to the n minus x to the n over h exactly as for uh, x squared and x cubed. Now slightly trickier here because I've got to think about the general binomial expansion for the uh, for, for this here for different values of n so um, what we'd get is x to the n plus n times h times x to the n minus 1 as the first two terms. Um, you can um, think about what the, the, how binomial expansions work and up if you need to, but these would be the first two terms. If you think about grabbing, grabbing the coefficients from Pascal's triangle, each row starts 1 and then n, you know, it goes down, in, you know, Pascal's triangle goes down sort of 1, 1, 1, but then um, the next one is 2, 3, 4, you know, so, so this is the second so we've got the one in front of here and the second coefficient is just n for the 
row number. Um, and we've got then after that some other terms and all of the other terms here will have a power of h in them that's h squared or higher so it will be the next one will be some coefficient times h squared times x to the n minus 2 um, and what's going to happen is eventually when we so if I've also got this x to the n term over here and h and I've got all these other terms from the binomial expansion here um, but when I cancel well first let's get rid of the x to the n and the x to the n here, they cancel out now when I cancel all the h's here uh, the h cancels from here and a factor of h will cancel from this one, the next one will have h cubed and it will cancel down to h squared but the point is that all of these terms over here will end up with something that's got uh, an h in them, so what we've got here is the limit as h tends to 0 of n x to the n minus 1 and the next and then it's h times something and h squared times something and h cubed times something. Uh, so as h tends to 0 all of those other terms tend to 0 and we're just left with n x to the n minus 1. So that proves that the uh, derivative of x to the n for a whole number uh, value of n is n times x to the n minus 1. Just for a positive integer there that I'm thinking about doing this binomial expansion. And of course we could generalize this very slightly and we could just say well what if I wanted you know a x to the n that's our sort of standard uh, general result that you probably learnt that the answer is a n x to the n minus 1 um, but uh, oh and of course uh, as soon as I've taken off the uh, the h's here this limit goes away so uh, we've, take, we've taken the limit once we've crossed these h's out so the answer is just that um, and uh, so if I had an a in here, I'd also get an a in here and an a in here. So I just so I'd end up just having everything multiplied by a. So we do end up with just this all times by a. And in fact, it's always the case that if we multiply a function by a constant, it's the derivative of the function also gets multiplied by that same constant for the same reason. Okay, slightly tricky one here. Then I'm going to do f of x is the square root of x. So this time, uh, f of x plus h. That's the square root of x plus h. f of x is the square root of x and that's all divided by h. Now, um, we need a slight trick here and we're going to use the a difference of two squares result to make this nice. So, um, to try and get rid of the square roots on the top here, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the same thing but with a plus instead of a minus. So, the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x and of course I then also need to multiply on the bottom by the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Um, so by the difference of two squares the top here is uh, root x plus h times root x plus h which is just x plus h and we do minus root x times root x which is minus x and the other two terms will cancel out this one times this one is minus and then plus the same term here uh, so that's the difference of two squares uh, all divided by h over the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Now you can see what's happened here is the x's have cancelled out, so I'm just left with uh, h um, over h times all of this stuff. So uh, we can also um, cancel out the h's. So let me just make sure that's clear. So if it's the limit of h tends to 0 of h over h times square root of x plus h plus the square root of x I'm now saying I can cancel out these h's and it's just 1 over this then. Okay, and now if we think about what happens to this as h tends to 0 well, um, as h tends to 0 this term here is going to get very close to the square root of uh, square root of x and that's the only h in, in this formula so um, I'm going to end up with just 1 divided by root x plus root x so that's 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x. And we notice that that follows the, the, the usual rule as well for uh, differentiating x to the n giving us n x to the n minus 1 even when the uh, n isn't a whole number here because we can have uh, root x is x to the half and this is uh, 1 over 2 root x so that's 1 half x to the minus 1 half. So we see that that fits in with that general rule as well when we think about uh, how the indices involved work. Okay, let's look at one last example then. 
this time f of x equals 1 over x, and so f dash of x is the limit at h tends to 0 of f of x plus h, which is 1 over x plus h, minus f of x, which is 1 over x, all divided by h. So let's try and uh, clean up this uh, fraction then, which has got some fractions uh, inside the fraction. So if we multiply top and bottom by x plus h, that would give us 1 minus x plus h over x, all divided by h. And if I, and then I, uh, sorry, times x plus h, and then, so that's multiply top and bottom by x plus h, and then if we multiply top and bottom by x, uh, then this will become limit as h tends to 0 of x, and now this time this x cancels, so we get minus x plus h, all divided by x times h times x plus h. We do need this x plus h in brackets here because it's minus this whole um, smaller fraction, so when I times it by x it's, it's minus all of x plus h. And now we notice that when we multiply out the top here, x minus x plus h, that becomes x minus x minus h. So um, the x minus x cancel out, and we're just left with the minus h. And then, as in the previous examples, uh, h cancels top and bottom, so we've just got this minus left here, so that's minus 1. Uh, so we've got the limit as h tends to 0 of minus 1 over x times x plus h. And as h tends to 0, uh, this gets very close to x plus h gets very close to x, so it's minus 1 over x squared. And again, that fits with our usual rule for nx to the n minus 1, because 1 over x is x to the minus 1, and minus 1 over x squared is um, minus x to the minus 2, so the usual rule of bringing the power down and reducing the power by 1 still applies here, it looks like, for negative values. So um, we've proven all of those examples with first principles. Obviously, we don't. once we've done it by first principles once, we don't need to do it every time. We can just know these results and use them. Um, it's reassuring, though, to know that uh, they are provable and you know we can, we can be sure that they're true now. Of course, if we um, want other results, we will have to either build on these ones or, or use first principles, but um, yeah, this justifies a lot of the rules that we're using uh, when we do differentiation.